I have a lot of experienced gardeners that watch my channel, but I also have a lot of new gardeners, and I wanted to do something for the beginner gardener. I started making a list of tips for the beginner gardener, and I quickly went over 10 tips, and I realized that this video would just be too long, so I decided to narrow it down to my top three tips for beginner gardeners. These three tips are two things you should know and one thing you should do. Before you even plant your first seed, you should know what your last frost date for your area is. In many areas, you can find out your last frost date by calling your local county extension office. Another way to find out is to ask a friend, family member, or neighbor who garden. If those two options won't work, you can also do something as simple as a Google search. The reason it's so important to know the last frost date is because that helps you know when to plant your seeds. Some things like carrots, radishes, lettuce, and spinach, and others can be planted before the last frost date. But other summer crops like tomatoes and peppers have to be planted after the last frost date. Some things like tomatoes and peppers have to be purchased as plants or started indoors weeks before the last frost date. It's important to know your last frost date because if you planted too early, something like this April snowstorm could ruin your garden and kill all of your tomato and pepper plants. I try to cheat occasionally by planting a little bit before our last frost date, but it's always a gamble. The weather forecast can change from day to day, and whenever that happens, sometimes you can end up having to cover a bunch of your plants, like your pepper and tomato plants and other sensitive plants, like I've done here. The best way to avoid that additional work is just to be patient and wait. For those experienced gardeners who are watching this, please put the tip that you think should be number four down in the comments. I'm sure the beginning gardeners would appreciate it, and so would I. Here's a look at a cold hardiness zone map, and each color on the map represents a different zone. I'm in zone 6B, which is kind of in the middle. Off to the side of the map, there's a little color chart that tells you which zone is represented by which color. And it also tells you how cold that particular zone gets in the wintertime. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has a great interactive map that allows you to even type in your zip code and find out what your zone is. For other countries, a simple Google search can usually turn up the information and like with the last frost date, you can also ask local gardeners and they can help you with that information. Because I know my cold hardiness zone, I knew that if I planted a musabashju banana tree, it would survive the winter here with mulch. But I also knew that if I planted a musa velutina banana tree, it couldn't survive the winter, so I would have to take it indoors for the winter and then move it back outside before it would produce bananas. Knowing your cold hardiness zone is important when planting any perennial flower, plant, shrub, berry, or even some trees. For instance, this hardy hibiscus will survive in zone 5, but if you planted a tropical hibiscus, it would die if it froze. Most retailers who sell perennial plants will have the zone listed right on the tag. If you choose perennial plants that are suited for your zone, many times they can last over 20 years like this hardy hibiscus has for us. Tip number three is find yourself a gardening mentor. I was lucky in that I was born with two. My mom was a gardener and she mainly grew flowers. My dad was a gardener and he mainly did the vegetable garden. This is a picture of them before I was even a gleam in my father's eye. And looking at them now, I'm thinking I inherited my looks from the shallow end of the gene pool. I started learning about gardening before I even realized I was learning about gardening. Some things just soaked in from being around it so much. If you aren't lucky enough to have a family member who is a gardener, or have a neighbor or a friend, 
You can also use a group as a mentor, such as YouTube's gardening community. There's lots of folks out there who do gardening videos, and most of them are more than glad to help you out if they can. And if you're watching this video, don't be afraid to ask a question. Sometimes I'll answer and sometimes other folks will answer, but most of us are glad to help if we can. There are also online forums, Facebook groups, that sort of thing. Uh, there are just uh, lots of information out there and opportunities if you just look for them. Like I mentioned before, if you're an experienced gardener, feel free to leave more tips if you feel like it. And if you're just now finding this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.